When you said, I do, you expected your marriage to last forever. You envisioned growing old with your spouse, holding hands in your rocking chair on the front porch. You meant every word of it, till death do us part. You never imagined death would come so soon. Being widowed is devastating at any age. How do you go on without the one you've loved the most? How do you face the challenges of daily life when your heart is broken into a million pieces? How do you find hope when you've lost love? Welcome to the Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi Show. This show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation with the mission of helping people find hope after loss. And now, Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Hello, I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley, and this is my mom, Dr. Gloria. We are psychologists and grief recovery experts, and we will be talking today about questions about spouse loss and how to find hope after loss. Well, Heidi, spouse loss is really quite a thing. It's really tough. Mm -hmm. That person that you've had in your life, that person that you've shared your dreams and your hopes with, mm -hmm. we've got you know, Alan Klein on, and Alan Klein mm -hmm. is a jolly ontologist. We'll have to ask him about that. Yeah. But uh, he has written how many books, Heidi? He's written 18 books, and I love what he's going to tell us today because he has used humor to cope and talks about the power of humor. And we want to talk to him. There's actually research on humor, mm -hmm. on how it is a healing uh, aspect. So let's welcome Alan to the show. Yes, Alan. Hey. Hi, Alan. <laughs> hey, Alan. <laughs> so great to see you. Good to see you. Oh, well, Alan, we want to start out by telling the folks a little bit, having you tell them about your journey and uh, what happened to you. Right. Well, it started a little over 30 years ago. My wife went to the doctor just for a physical checkup, mm -hmm. and he called her back a couple of days later and said, um, you know, I don't kind of like the tests that we did in the office, and uh, I need to put you in the hospital and we'll do some more tests. Mm -hmm. And what happened was he found out she had uh, terminal liver disease, primary biliary cirrhosis. Wow. It's a rare liver disease. There were no transplants, liver transplants at the time. And uh, mostly w women over 65 got this illness, and Ellen was 31. Wow, wow. that's awful. Wow. That's and uh, she did pass away three years later at 34. And you had, what, a 10-year-old daughter? A 10-year-old daughter at the time when she passed away. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it was a very difficult time, needless to mm -hmm. say. There were no hospices even to turn to. Mm -hmm. But Ellen had a great sense of humor, and it really helped and nourished me remembering that sense of humor. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. She was in the hospital with a copy of Playgirl magazine with the male <laughs> nude centerfold, and she <laughs> said, um, hey, Ellen, I really like this picture this month, uh, this nude man. Can you... <laughs> put on the wall over here, and I said, Ellen's hospital, she would have escaped <laughs> that. And she said, yeah, well, why don't you get a leaf from the plant and cover up that part? <laughs> <laughs> and I did that, and I realized it was only, what, five or 10 seconds of laughter, but it helped us rise above the situation, gave us a reprieve, mm -hmm. gave us a, a, a little bit of laughter to lift us, it gave us a little bit of hope. Yep. And so after Ellen died, it was Norman Cousins talking about how he healed himself of humor. Mm -hmm. So I went back to school to learn about humor. Uh, I wrote my first book called The Healing Power of Humor. And I got a master's degree in human, H-U-M-A-N, development. But it was all focused on the therapeutic value of humor. Now you've got some of your books here, right? The yeah, Healing this power was the first one, The Healing Power of Humor. Wow. And then I, this is like every day, how to use human everyday situations. Oh, I like that. And then I kind of took that one step further and I interviewed 100 people, people with cancer, people with AIDS, people with lingering loss, sudden loss. And I asked them, did they find anything to laugh about in that difficult time? Mm -hmm. And about 98 out of 100 said yes, and I documented how they found humor in those serious times. I, I love that, Alan, because one of the things that we find in working with uh, people that have had a loss is that they feel guilty when they laugh. Yeah, people feel guilty. You know, yeah. I remember after my son died, I, my husband and I went uh, to Patootsie, remember that movie? But oh, yeah. it was six months later, and we didn't want anybody to see us laugh, so right. we went to another town. Right, right, right. So. Yeah, people feel guilty. And you know, if for the, some of the books, I interviewed people and ask them, how would your person that died in your life, how would your spouse, 
want you to live your life? Mm -hmm. How would you want them to remember, be remembered? And nearly all of them said, I wanted them, uh, I want to remember the happier times. Mm -hmm. uh, my spouse didn't want me to be sad after I was gone. And yet that doesn't happen. People do feel guilty. Right. And you, you know, there's new research. It's in a book called The Other Side of Sadness. And they did a two-year study. This just came out last year. Two-year study of people that have lost a spouse. And, and they found that those who found some laughter right during that time did much better over the next two years than those people that did not. All right. Wow. So I want to just show this book, too. This is your latest, Learning to Laugh when you feel like crying. And then I'm going to go out to the audience and see if maybe a couple of people have some questions for you. Fantastic. Yeah. I think sometimes for me it was hard because the laughing turned into tears. Mm. But it was also healing. We had two daughters who were teenagers and sometimes um, we would re remember something about their dad. And by being able to laugh about it, it let us cry about it. Right. And I was wondering if you could talk about the tears aspect of tears. it. Right. Tears and laughter are very close. You know, I think uh, Gibran said they come from the same well. They come really down deep. The laughter, mm -hmm. you know, ha, 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 and the tears. And, and it's okay to cry. You know, it's okay to laugh. It's not like one is wrong and the other's right. So they're both very therapeutic. And, and the interesting thing to me, there was a study done showing when people cut an onion, they cry. There's no toxins in there. But when you um, have an emotional experience and you cry and the tears, they're getting some of those toxins out. And the same thing when you have a good laugh until you start to cry, there's toxins in those tears also. So it's both of them are really uh, very valuable in so loss. What do you think? Uh, I, I have a lot of women who uh, say that their brothers, their fathers or whatever who've had a loss, they can't get them to laugh. How do you get guys to do that? How do you get people happy again? No, I don't. Were you I, happy? How long did it take you? No, I was, I was, it was like this uh, only time in my life when I felt my heart was breaking, you mm -hmm. know? It was very difficult. But I kept remembering my wife's humor. I kept remembering the good times we had together. I realized I had a daughter. How are we going to live our life together? And so one of the very first thing I think within the next, a couple of months after my wife died, I said to my daughter, we need an adventure. Mm -hmm. And we went on an Alaskan uh, trip on the ferry system, the rafting, the seaplanes, the, and we still talk about that. It was a bonding time. It was a time to forget about what happened for three years. It wasn't a time to forget about talking about mommy. You know, we did that. Right. We, all, we, we still do. We, oh, mommy would say this, or, you know, or we don't have, know how to do something. Well, well what would Ellen do? Because right. you know, she always had such a great sense of humor. How would she lighten this up? Right. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So it's not, I think you said something before about forgetting or trying to get over the loss. Right. I'm glad we don't get over the loss mm -hmm. because Ellen is always with me. She's here right now, folks. Right. You know, yeah. She is here. And all these books you've written, have they mainly been connected with laughter and dealing with it? And, a lot and, of them, a lot of just uplifting uh, motivational inspiration. That's but great. But like uh, learning to laugh when you feel like crying, very simple. I didn't want a lot. You know, I've read grief books, and they're usually 300 pages and mm -hmm. tell you how difficult it's going to be. So this is really lighter and uh, helps you move the five stages, losing, learning, uh, letting go, living, and finally laughing. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you, Ellen. It's been so great having you on the show today, and I hope everyone will get your book, and I, thank you. And I hope they'll do that healing laughter. And, uh, <laughs> and also, we could all yeah. laugh. <laughs> uh, and, and also, they can go on your website like and find out where you're, where you're going to be presenting, too. Exactly. So yep. that is a great thing. Thank great. you. Ben. Thank um, you. Thanks. Thank you, Bye. Alan. Thanks. Well, Heidi, it's... It, it's been great having Alan on the show, hasn't it? It has. I love that he's talking about laughter as being therapeutic and he's normalizing it and talking about how laughter and crying are very similar. Right. And what is it you say about babies and adults? I remember yeah, when you give is, a talk, you say something about that. Well, it's that. interesting. The research shows that babies laugh on average 300 times a day and adults only laugh on average 20 times a day. Wow. And like 
like Ellen is saying, we need to laugh more in life. We and need to express our emotions more. Right. It gets up that, uh, those endorphins mm -hmm. and does a lot of great stuff for you. So hope you folks out there in the audience and in TV land will, will find, you know, get some funny movies or something. Uh, thank you all. Our other this has been yes. the Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi Show, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, with a mission of helping people find hope after loss. Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi invite you to visit them at opentohope.com where you can listen to radio shows, watch Open to Hope television, read articles, and view books. Also, join them on Twitter and Facebook and put your events on their international calendar. Thanks for watching.